this morning we're looking at Proverbs chapter 14, and there's really one verse that, that struck me this morning. That's verse 14, but it's hard for me to skip over other verses. Um, so what I want to do this morning is just read the first 13 verses, make brief comments uh, to those verses, and then let's look at verse 14 and um, just recognize and realize how volatile a state that all of us are in. Uh, even the strongest of us are, are in volatile states. So let's look at what Solomon says. Verse 14, he says, The wisest of women builds her house, but folly with her own hands tears it down. It, it only takes one decision to tear down all that we might have built in character in a lifetime. I'm always reminded that, that man, we are always one decision away um, from, from just really making huge mistakes in our life. So the wise woman, well, she'll, she'll build the house, but one decision can bring her own house down. Whoever walks in uprightness fears the Lord, but he who is devious in his ways despises God. By the mouth of fool comes a rod for his back, but the lips of the wise will preserve him. There again, we, we watch our tongue, what we say, how we say it, when we say it. Where there are no oxen, the manger is clean, but abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. A faithful witness does not lie, but a false witness breathes out lies. The image there is that one who has a, a false witness, a heart of being a liar or telling tales and stories, ex exaggerating things, it can't help but it. Uh, but uh, breathe out lies, continual lies. You never know whether they're telling the truth or not. A scoffer seeks wisdom in vain, but knowledge is easy for a man of understanding. A scoffer, one who scoffs the ways of God, one who uh, may criticize or make fun of one who follows God. Um, they seek wisdom, but in vain. They're not going to gain wisdom because wisdom but knowledge is easy for a man of understanding, a man of wisdom. Leave the presence of a fool, for there you do not meet words of knowledge. Um, in other words, it, you, you can't reason with a fool. Uh, nothing you can do, can, you can reason with a fool. So he says, depart from that, that fool, for there, uh, for there we do not, do not meet words of knowledge or wisdom. The wisdom of the prudent is to discern his way, but folly of fools is deceiving. Um, to be a prudent person, a, a person who's managed in their life, as Solomon says that he writes these proverbs for us that we might have a prudent life, but but the wisdom of the prudent discern. We think about our ways. We discern our ways. I read a quote yesterday by C.H. Spurgeon. I liked it. And it, see if I can, I may mess up the quote, but it went something like this, that discernment is not to be able to judge between what is right and what is wrong. Discernment is to be able to judge between what is right and what is almost right. You see, only a margin away from right makes it false. Um, so that was a good, good statement I read there. Fools mark at the guilt offering, but the upright enjoy acceptance. The heart knows its own bitterness, and no stranger shares its joy. The heart knows its own bitterness. And no stranger shares his joy. I had to contemplate on that a little bit, and I think I still may have to chew on that a little bit today. Um, but I think what Solomon is saying here is the one who's bitter in heart, they, they know that. They recognize that there's a bitterness in their heart. And sometimes bitterness of heart manifests in a lot of different ways. Uh, I found through the years that when one is bitter or angry in their heart, uh, you can almost tell it. There's never anything positive. There's never anything joyous. Um, there's always criticism. There's never any encouragement. But the heart knows its own bitterness, and no stranger shares its joy. The house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. And there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Meaning in our own judgment, in our own abilities to reason, there's a way that may seem right to us, um, but its end is the way of death. 
The only way we know how to discern what is the right way, the Bible says a man makes his plans, but God orders his steps. And so when we face a time that we are having to make a decision as to what is the right way or the wrong way, it's best to stop and pause and seek God. And the way that God mostly speaks to us is through his word. And trust him to speak and give direction through his word. Even in laughter, the heart may ache, and the end of joy may be grief. Now, here's verse 14, where I wanted to concentrate just a little bit more this morning. He says, The backslider in heart will be filled with the fruit of his ways, and a good man will be filled with the fruit of his ways. Uh, backsliding is not a word that we hear very often anymore. We used to hear it pretty, pretty regularly in the church. And... <clears throat> There's a warning to all of us that that have that are believers, that are Christ followers, that that we are we can all um, we're all in danger at any moment of backsliding from the Lord. Now we we often think of backsliding as as uh, where one may go back to whatever vice or sin they may have had before they were a Christian. But here the statement is made: the one who backslides in heart. And, of course, we know that Jesus' message to the Pharisees in his day was the Pharisees had all the outward things down right. Um, man, they, they obeyed the law, and, and they obeyed even the laws that they had written, some 700 of them or so, that they had written uh, to, to, to discern what would violate the Sabbath or what wouldn't. Uh, and they kept those to the T. But Jesus' message to the Pharisees was, listen, you've got it all right on the outside, but can I tell you, your heart is wicked and your heart is evil. Um, and and you, make, you make worse those that, that follow you by heaping your, your commands on them that are, that are not God commands. He says, you know, you're, you're, like, you're like whitewashed tombs that on the outside, the tomb looks very pretty and very nice. But inside the tomb are dead man's bones. And Jesus went on to say that, listen, it's right that you've not murdered someone, but I tell you that if you've ever hated someone in your heart, you're guilty of murder. Um, you're right in that you say that you've not committed adultery. But I tell you, if you've ever lusted after a woman in your heart, then, then you've already committed adultery. Um, and so... The message there was that it's the heart. And we as believers, if we're not careful, we can have everything looking good on the right, on the outside. I've been a believer about 37, 36, 37 years now. And many of you have been Christ followers for a long time too. We have to admit, we, we have learned to play the game, right? We have learned to reflect uh, uh all the right ways, um, to say the right words, to use the right vernacular, uh, all of those things. But only we know our hearts. And the heart is wicked and deceitful above all things, Jesus said. And he's given us a new heart. But that, that, that living out, if you will, of that new heart means that we have to yield to the Holy Spirit of God. And so each one of us are in danger in any moment of backsliding in the heart. And can I admit to you that there are many times I recognize that I have backslidden in my heart. I, I have turned away in my heart from my devotion to the Lord. I've turned away in my heart from, from my, my joys in the Lord. And I know if you're honest, every one of you have too at times. And so the, the key there, I think, is to depend on the Holy Spirit of God. You see, the moment I begin trying to live the Christian life, I may have it right on the outside, but my heart is in danger of slipping away, backsliding from the Lord. And so it necessitates on every one of us a daily time of yielding to the Holy Spirit of God. Paul said in Ephesians that we're to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a, that word in there is indicative Greek, meaning that we have to continually be filled with the Spirit of God. 
And in Galatians chapter 5, it, Paul makes a, a, a long dissertation there of the difference between the works of the flesh and the works of the Spirit. And so, I don't know about you, but every single day, beginning my day, I have got to consciously, willingly, intentionally yield my heart to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You know, the crazy thing is, 30 minutes after I've done that, I can find myself walking in the flesh. Do I hear an amen to that? Or sometimes less than 30 minutes. We are so dependent. We need to be so dependent on the Holy Spirit of God and be close to Him. And He is faithful to, to convict us, to bring us in His loving, gentle way back into fellowship with Him. So... We, we want to pray this morning that God would, would change our heart in any way that we might be backslidden from the Lord in our heart.